This month is going to be interesting. Inflation is expected to hit here in the U.S. up to 3.1%. That is that is crazy if you compare that to the most recent low we had with inflation. I worry about this because we just passed another $1.9 trillion freaking COVID relief package in which 80 to 90% of that whole package isn't even geared towards COVID relief, but more towards... I guess you could say political interest, but that's a whole different conversation. That $1.9 trillion injection could have some serious consequences to the U.S. economy. Now, all of this, in my opinion, is going to be very, very important for the what cryptocurrency, Bitcoin primarily, is going to look like for the rest of the year. There's a lot of things setting up right now that say that Bitcoin could absolutely break a $100,000 threshold at the end of this year. There's a lot of things saying that things like Ethereum could find a $10,000 threshold by the end of this year. A lot of crazy things are happening with your favorite tech stocks and things like the NASDAQ. If you look at what the NASDAQ has been doing over the past one month, it's like looking at Bitcoin. It's like looking at cryptocurrency. Look at that volatility. Absolute insanity. And if you want to take that a step farther take the time to go investigate some of your favorite tech stocks they're getting smashed they're getting hammered right now there are some aspects of the traditional market that are doing better one of them being the dow jones this is only due to the 1.9 trillion dollar relief package that did get passed that doesn't really benefit covid but benefits those who have a huge interest in things such as the dow jones or the stock market but the long and the short of it things could get crazy things could get crazy i'm telling you this 1.9 trillion dollars in my opinion is going to give us a clear picture how this rolls out for the rest of years is going to give us a clear picture what the next three years or four years is going to be like and what the next two to three years of crypto is going to look like this behavior right here could very well fuel a bull market for cryptocurrency for years to come this could give the cryptocurrency ecosystem enough ether to keep burning hot. Now, I'm basing this off last year. I'm basing this off the beginning of this year. I'm basing this off what we've just seen as far as a price action with cryptocurrency and seeing how we have been pretty resistant even after we were following tech stocks for the past two years. Okay, The price of Bitcoin and crypto has followed tech stocks for the past two years. We seem to have a, a little bit of a breakaway from that. This tells me that crypto and Bitcoin is actually being looked at like that safe hedge, that safe spot. But that is still, it is still too early to fully assume that. I mean, we all assume that because it all makes sense. But you got to remember, crypto, the way we see things in the cryptocurrency and how major investors see things in the more traditional world doesn't always make sense. We don't see eye to eye. We don't, they don't follow what makes sense. They follow what makes them the most money. While we look at things through ideals, they look at things through greed. So I don't know. We don't know how this is fully going to play out. But in my mind, the way things are, 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 are like are unfolding with the traditional markets, I I think there's I think there's something there, enough fuel there to fuel this bull market for longer than just just this year. You know, this could last in the next year as well, which is good news for most of you guys. So let's keep our eyes on this kind of stuff right here. Let's keep our eyes on what's happening to the traditional market. Let's see what's let's pay attention to what's happening with tech stocks. I'm pretty sure that we might start seeing some of that money rolling into the crypto side, the dark side, if you will. But I, I don't know. It's not it's not bad for us i don't think okay now i could be wrong i could be completely wrong this could be gloom you know freaking the gloom and dooms and then and the the armageddon of bitcoin for all we know but it just doesn't make sense it seems to make more sense that as they struggle they're going to go to the one place that is deflationary okay and it's, it's it's a safe bet all right so now let's get back more on to the traditional crypto talk here just want to kind of open up with that because that could be a big deal uh pond pond has been on a rampage look at this you know what when i watch pond and i look at the chart do you not see the well buys that happen in this like these bigger candles these are well buys and this is a this is a fat stack that somebody sunk into pond a lot of rumors going on right now about pond nothing bad 
everything about Pawn that's a rumor is good. Some of these rumors have to deal with exchange listings. Some of these other rumors have to deal with massive major partnerships that are going to yield and some sort of explosive growth. And it's going to be very beneficial to those that hold the Pawn token. To, I mean, just it's kind of crazy. There's a lot of rumors out there, but there's nothing that has been written in stone and nothing that has been announced yet. So with every rumor, there's some sort of a hint of truth. So Pond is something I'm very optimistic. I'm very excited about. I keep watching this one closely. I mean, I have a lot that I watch closely. But Pond is definitely um, definitely one of my favorites for this year. I don't know if it'd be like the coin of the year, but I think it'll be like this could be like the neo like the thing that everyone remembers and doesn't forget through this bull market you know what i mean something else i want to talk about is option room option room is i get asked about this all the time is hey what's your temperature in option room do you still believe in option room do you still think option room is a good one so on and so forth and the answer is yeah damn right i am still a huge supporter of option room you must realize of all the things that are beautiful about this, the most important thing is the fact that it's built on Polkadot, okay? Polkadot gives it like instant VC muscle, instant freaking well backing. It's going to have everything it needs to succeed. When you see things like this, of this caliber, get quiet, get calm. Don't panic. I'm telling you what's happening. This is, the, this is the point where they came out, they went live, they made money, everyone made money off of this, and they're, they are strategizing, they're developing. This is the building phase. This is not the time for something of this caliber to sit there and keep pumping and pumping and pumping with marketing and keep trying to shill the crap out of it. This is a time for them to go to work right and make something happen i guarantee you option room at some point will have some sort of major partnership major announcements like real meaningful announcement and partnership I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see like one per month breakout or even two per month so we're in march right now we haven't heard anything i'm willing to bet you anything in march you're going to hear about something big and in in, in april you're going to hear about something big I, I just see this project being of that caliber of making sure they deliver something big each month so don't 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 overlook them and don't think just because you know things have calmed down as i'm trying to go to the moon that this is a, a bad play or a bad investment this is actually a good thing to see there's some stability here in the price so just kind of keep your eyes out on it something else that's gonna be really big in our space is dora factory now i told you guys about dora factory i think last week or the week before i told you guys listen this is something everyone's been talking about and it's already starting you're starting to see other influencers mention dora factory and i'm going to tell you one of the most substantial things about dora factory aside from the team itself and the contributions they've already given to the ecosystem the cryptocurrency ecosystem since 2017 Substrat based startup Dora Factory has closed its first uh, its first round of private sales led by Hash Key. Hash Key is a big deal. Now let's talk about Hash Key Group for a second, okay? If you're looking for like the most legitimate, like legitimate freaking entities that connects institutions and VCs to projects and does good stuff, Hash Key is definitely one of them they are definitely worth researching and they are also worth following like there's certain investment groups that i follow and i try to put my money where they put their money spark is one of them i like to follow spark if spark is going to be behind something i want to put my money in there i want to support it i want to be part of it because spark is really good at bringing in the right players to create success hash key is also like that okay now when it comes to dora factory alone like what it is if you think about all the biggest developers that things like neil and ethereum has ever gotten their hands on they came from dora okay dora before it was dora factory it was a, it was a whole different entity the people behind this know what they're doing these guys are excellent at finding talent, finding the right people to build. I got to tell you, I think Dora is going to be pretty substantial and you're going to see a lot of people starting to talk about it. This is going to be something that this year will have anyone who was in there early, anyone who knew about it first will have a lot of clout. Something else we got to talk about is Cold Stack. Now, Cold Stack, this thing is like just... It's just purely sexy. And here's what makes it the most sexy for me. If you 
are in things like Prometheus or Prosper. The same people behind those two are behind this. You want to talk about a very credible, a very reliable, dependable, a very trustworthy, a very capable team. The people behind those two projects is definitely it. And those guys are supporting Coldstack. So I think Coldstack is going to have a lot more hype. It's going to have a lot more people. It's going to have a lot more exposure than Prosper and Prometheus both did. I think Coldstack is going to freaking crush it. Now, Coldstack is something that I like to follow on Twitter. They're really good about their updates on Twitter. They're really good about keeping you in the know as far as what's going on, the collaborations. As you can see right here, Prometheus Labs introduces Coldstack, Uber for clouds. So, I mean, it's really good stuff. I think Coldstack is one that wouldn't even be a bad market buy. Now, I did get into the early investment opportunity with this. I will be one of those de-risking. As soon as this thing hits market, everything I invested into it, I'm going to pull that out right away. That's just smart. It's something that I think everyone should do. So always keep in mind when something hits market, you are buying someone else's de-risk. So, I mean, cold sack, you know, I don't I don't think it's going to go very poorly after the start. I, I think you should definitely uh, exercise your own risk manager on this bad boy. But looking at how Prosper and Prometheus both did... I think it's almost a no-brainer to say that cold stack is probably going to do equally as good, if not better. And if you are going to get in cold stack, you might as well go ahead and get into the Prosper ecosystem as well. I know that Prosper has had a hell of a run, and a lot of people thinking, "Oh, it's already up 104% in the past 30 days. It's done. It's exhausted. Nothing else is going to happen." I have to disagree with that. I believe that we're at a phase right now to where a lot of people are enjoying the profits and enjoying the money they made. The team from Prosper themselves, I have to tell you, they're a solid group of people. Uh, they don't play the same counterintelligence BS games that everyone else plays. They, they're, they're not that kind of a predatory project. And if again, if also if you can have Prosper and Coldstack, you make sure you have Prometheus as well. When I first told you guys about these things, they were very affordable. When I first told you guys about Prometheus, I think it was like less than $4. I can't remember. It was it was a while back when I first kind of said, hey, this, this looks like it's going to take off. And the only reason I suspected that is when I found that we're tied to Prosper. And I seen the people behind it and the work they're doing. I knew this was going to take off. And I don't think either one of them are done yet. That's just my opinion. I do not think any of them are done yet. I think right now they are both in a, what you can say, a consolidation phase. Just kind of settling, developing, building, uh, putting some muscle behind things like this, cold stack. And I think, uh, I think throughout the course of this year, you're going to see several rallies for these two, uh, actually all three of them. Uh, and I think everyone will be happy with the gains they make. Now, lastly, I want to go ahead and throw Dow Makers, uh, my neighbor Alice in there again. I believe this is supposed to be going live in the next couple of weeks. It's an NFT kind of platform. It's a game. Okay, but it's very cute. Everything cute in crypto always does well, and Dowmaker has built a pretty good community behind this. There's a lot of exposure to this. I, I think this one, at the very least, if you're not going to be someone who wants to go and buy the tokens, if you don't want to go in there and say, all right, I want to risk on tokens, I think it's worth keeping an eye on the game itself and posturing yourself to go ahead and get involved in the gaming ecosystem aspect of it. Um, because I think this will do well. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's cool. It's cute. And knowing that Dow Maker's behind it, I think it has a really good chance of doing something or going somewhere. Yes, I know a lot of games have been attempted. A lot of games have been tried. And a lot of games have failed in this ecosystem. That is absolutely the truth. Dow Maker has done a good job at looking at what went wrong with everyone else and making those adjustments. Is those adjustments exactly what is needed to make My Neighbor Alice the next big game, the next big thing that everyone's going to adopt, and it's about the next Minecraft? I can't say yes, and I can't say no. All I can say is I'm looking forward to the launch. I'm looking forward to see how the community reacts to it. I'm looking forward to see where it goes. It could fail. It could succeed. I do not know. But uh, I feel like the right people are, right, are behind it that could give it its best chance. This month is going to be a very interesting one. I think uh, with the whole inflation crisis, the $1.9 trillion going out, the stimulus, and the new $14 checks, and just there's a lot of money being thrown around right now. I think that this month could give us some very clear indications of how the next few years are going to play out for crypto. I do, I do feel that with this chaos happening with the, the traditional world, 
that this could be the rocket fuel we need to have a multi-year bull run uh, that makes a lot of people a lot of money. But listen, that's it. That's all I have for today. I want to share some uh, some fire opportunities and projects and some thoughts on what to pay attention to. I'm going to work really hard and try to get another piece of content out tomorrow because I did get some opportunities into some early investments and in these bad boys. I think there's going to be a public sale on a couple of these where several of you guys um, will have opportunities uh, to get in there and get and play early. But yeah, so I will do, I'll work my best. I'll work my best to get that video out tomorrow. But listen, that's all I have for today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out.